storm of uh, controversy has been unleashed recently about Golda Meir, <laughs> of all people. You followed that? You know what I'm talking about? Actually, the former Israeli prime minister has little to do with the row. Passions have been ignited because of the actress Helen Mirren, <laughs> of all people. The Academy Award winner will play Golda Meir in an upcoming movie. This struck some Jews as unfair, given that Mirren isn't Jewish. You know that, right? <laughs> you know, even though Helen Mirren played the Jewish refugee Maria Altman in that great movie, Woman in Gold, that was a movie part. You realize that didn't make her Jewish, right? She played a Jewish woman in a movie. That's what actors do. They pretend. Movies aren't real. You know that, right? <laughs> we shouldn't assume that Helen Mirren herself is Jewish or Israeli when she plays Golda Meir on the big screen. Dame Maureen Lipman, the highly acclaimed Jewish British actress, criticized the casting of Dame Mirren for this reason. She's not Jewish. What is a dame anyway? You know these British, they love titles. I lived in England for a while and I still have many British friends and I can tell you firsthand that a lot of dukes are dummies. Lots of lords are losers. Lots of knights are nutters. There are eccentric earls and Bonkers, barons. But I digress. <laughs> Maureen Lipman opined that Jewish roles should be played by Jewish actors. Comedian Sarah Silverman also asserted that Hollywood has what she calls a Jew face problem. She meant the practice of casting a non Jew to portray a Jew. Not a casual Jew or a person who happens to be Jewish, but when a Gentile plays a person whose Jewishness is central to their being, often with makeup and changing features and all the Yiddishy expressions, that, according to Silverman, constitutes a Jew face problem. Take, for example, me. When they make a movie about me, a Jew face problem would be in selecting, say, George Clooney to play me. Well, I'm not sure I would object to that. Now, all of Helen Mirren's critics clarify that actors should be allowed to act. How could they not emphasize this? They're actors. Actors crave each and every role that intrigues or challenges them. As Helen Mirren herself said, should a Jew be prevented from playing a Gentile? Should Gal Gadot not play Cleopatra? But the critics also point out that given the spirit of our times, representation on the screen matters. Sarah Silverman said it in a much more colorful way, as is her want, words that I can't really repeat on the pulpit. <laughs> but her point was that given the enormous sensitivity nowadays in the West to diversity, equity, inclusion, microaggressions, that these principles, this respect, this sensitivity should also be accorded to Jews, especially Jewish women. Jewish women, Silverman said, are not even considered for great Jewish roles, like, for example, Ruth Bader Ginsburg or Betty Friedan or Golda Meir, for that matter. 
The actors themselves are not doing anything wrong, according to the critics, but as Silverman pointed out, such recurring casting of Gentiles in Jewish roles is messed up. She said it in a much more colorful way that I can't repeat from the pulpit. We've gone off the rails in our country and in the West. It always starts in a good place. In Hollywood and Broadway, it starts with the recognition that there is bias in casting roles that affect incomes and jobs op job opportunities. In schools, it starts with the correct understanding that minorities do not have the same opportunities to benefit from American meritocracy and that that lack of access undermines the very concept of meritocracy. But like everything else in life, social theories are prone to distortion through exaggeration. Acknowledging racism in American policing leads some to insist on defunding the police, get rid of them at all, and replace them with who knows what, something else. That is not good sense, that's nonsense. Justifiable sensitivity to feelings and emotions leads to ridiculous decisions of banning the books, Mouse and Beloved. A fuller understanding of the all too human flaws of even the greatest leaders results in a crusade of renaming schools, honoring Abraham Lincoln, George Washington, and Thomas Jefferson. Now I'm sensitive to the contention that, okay, maybe we've gone overboard, but if that is how we are now in society, why shouldn't Jews be part of that equation too? That actually makes sense to me. If a straight person can no longer portray a gay person on screen, if even Lin-Manuel Miranda's In the Heights was not representative enough of the Afro-Latino community in Washington Heights, well, why should a Gentile portray a Jew on screen? Why are the Jews the only exception to this culture of diversity, equity, and inclusion? If we are so sensitive nowadays to minorities, why is only one minority, the Jewish minority, neglected? This view I understand, and I even agree with. It smacks of something deeper about the way Jews are viewed. It is strange that so few Jews are cast in Jewish roles. And I like that Jewish actors are sticking up for Jews. That's my kind of people. <laughs> Not enough American Jews do that. And I confess, I love Sarah Silverman, <laughs> even though I can't repeat any of her jokes publicly. But you realize the risks we are taking. If everything is about race and ethnicity, if everything is about microaggressions, if everything is about sensitivity to feelings over and above sensitivity to facts, then we are sliding on this slippery slope of secular apostasy, the betrayal of liberalism and Western values. You can't say anything, you can't do anything, you can't act the roles you want, you can only play music of your in-group, anything else is cultural appropriation. Let me ask you, can a Jewish pianist play Beethoven? Can a conductor of color preside over a Puccini opera? Can a Jewish conductor lead Handel's Messiah? <laughs> Would Irving Berlin be able to compose White Christmas today? <laughs> and how Jewish do you need to be? Can Shia LaBeouf, who has a Jewish mother, 
and a Christian father and who was both bar mitzvahed and baptized and attended camp, Christian camp, can Shia LaBeouf play Golda Meir's husband? Is he Jewish enough? What about Elizabeth Taylor? She converted to Judaism. Did that make her Jewish enough? And once she became Jewish, could she still play Cleopatra? And why should the Australian Hugh Jackman be able to play the Frenchman Jean Valjean in Les Miserables? Should the surpassingly brilliant and openly gay Ian McKellen be restricted only to gay roles? Is this really what we've become now? Should the able-bodied Daniel Day-Lewis not have portrayed Christy Brown in my left foot? If only members of my minority should portray the minority, should minority actors also allowed to play roles beyond their minority affiliation in an effort to correct past systemic wrongs? George Gershwin is buried in our synagogue cemetery. His music contains, the cantors will tell you, his music contains the distinctive sound of chazanut, Jewish cantorial music. If an African-American plays the music of Gershwin, is that cultural appropriation? Did Gershwin himself culturally appropriate African-American music? If a Jewish musician plays the music of Louis Armstrong, is that cultural appropriation or cultural appreciation? Couldn't it also be viewed as a sign of respect, admiration? and even love. And isn't it the case that what art and culture are all about in the first place is to bring differing views and different experiences to the art of interpretation? Isn't it ironic that the very people, purveyors of culture, who themselves are the ones insisting on the unbearable narrowness of their own industry, an industry, industry premised on putting yourself in another person's shoes. That is what acting is about. Artists are not only purveyors of their craft, in some ways they are also slaves to their craft. Something in them compels them to draw, paint, act, imagine, create. Actors need to act. That the effort to constrain artists is coming from the artists themselves is astonishing to me. The subtlety and power of art are being lost in our contemporary maelstrom of rage and political correctness. Cancel culture deprives us of nuance, depth, and real understanding. Censorship, whether imposed from the outside or self-imposed, is devastating to the artistic process. Art is the domain of all humanity. Art is life itself. The effort to make us conscious of ourselves. It's free expression. It develops and grows through individual vision. That's why authoritarians are afraid of art and seek to constrict and censor it. It is dangerous to those who have a narrow field of vision who seek conformity and uniformity. Great art is created through interpretation. It is the ability to inhabit Another's character through the artist's own eyes and own experiences to imagine what the other feels. The result of this clash is often profound empathy. 
George Eliot did not have to be Jewish to write Daniel Deronda. In fact, that she was not Jewish made her masterpiece even more powerful. If you haven't read Daniel Deronda, you should. Hamlet has been played by women. I saw a Royal Shakespeare Company production several years ago, back before the pandemic, when people used to go to these places called theaters. Remember that? I saw an RSE production in which a black actor portrayed the Prince of Denmark, bringing to the role a widely praised, different, and unique perspective to Hamlet that nobody had ever witnessed before. And I have news for our Christian brothers and sisters. Jesus wasn't white. He was Semitic, dark-skinned. Does this disqualify white, blue-eyed actors from portraying him? Does it diminish the brilliance of Da Vinci's Last Supper? If we Jews are forced into the conversation of identity politics on their terms, well, we don't like this wokeism, but given that it is pervasive. We, too, want to claim our corner of that. If that is where the Jewish community ends up, it'll be bad for everyone, including Jews. We should be marshalling all of our energies against this fundamentally illiberal worldview. Because let no one be fooled. That kind of identity politics is always bad for Jews because we're always lumped with the bad guys, the whites, the privileged, the colonialists, whatever society considers at that moment to be oppressive or deviant. Jewish achievement in the West is dependent on the principles of Western enlightenment, achievement based on merit not skin color, ethnicity, or gender identity. This wokeful slumber is rendering Americans catatonic. We've lost our minds. It's so bad that the new Academy of Motion Pictures in Los Angeles <laughs> hardly acknowledges any Jews at all. It's a history of Hollywood. It was Jews who founded Hollywood. And by the way, much of the museum's funding came from Jews. And it hardly acknowledges Jews at all. So my take is this. If you object to Helen Mirren playing Golda Meir, don't watch the movie. I'll tell you what it's about. My only concern is Helen Mirren's concern. She said, my only fear is if I'm really bad as Golda. I resonate with that. Because Golda Meir was so inspirational that she deserves to be portrayed by a great actress. Shabbat shalom.